Good morning, friends. Dr. James McBean is here today, and we want to talk about what does it mean to love your enemy? What does the scripture mean when it says you must love your enemy? We want to read from St. Matthew 5. We want to read verse 43 to about 46. Ye have heard that it had been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemy. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Verse 45. That he may be the children of your heavenly Father which is in heaven. For he make it this, the son, his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And he sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if he love them which love you, what reward have he? Do not he even the publican the same? We could stop there. A lot of believers do not understand these scriptures. And because they do not understand the scriptures that they read, and some of them even try to teach. That's why we're having so much trouble. Because if you have some bad dog in the neighborhood and you keep feeding those bad dog who try to bite you up each day they see you down the road. How does that help you? When you love and you feed your enemy and you do good to your enemy who is chopping you down every day, in what way does it filter back wrong to you? You are making him strong. You are making him strong. So he can go to you like a fish. That's what you're doing. When you're praying for him and you are blessing him. You are putting him up. So he can be above you. To step on your neck. You have to understand what the scripture is saying to you. Otherwise you're going to make a lot of mistakes. And it's going to be your own demise. In verse 45. He say here that he may. The why he there is talking about you and I. But that's a mistranslation. Because here we say that he may be the children of your heavenly father. You are already children of your heavenly father. That's why you are able to extend a hand of love and brotherhood to the person who persecute you. That's why you are able to do that because you are already children of your heavenly father. But you are going to treat these enemies, these wicked people, with brotherhood that they might become children of your heavenly father. That's the reason why you are praying for him. You are praying for him so he can become children of your heavenly father. Not you. You are already children of your heavenly father. That's the reason why you can give him some food. That's where you get that new nature from. That's where that new you come from. Because you are children of your heavenly father. That's why you can pray for him. Because you are children of your heavenly father. But you are praying for him. The blessing that you are pronouncing upon him is blessing for him to become children of your heavenly father. 
The food that you are giving him is that you are nourishing him. No, not nourishing him. You are feeding him, just like what the scripture said. For him to be alive, so he can become children of your heavenly father. He said you must feed him. He did not say you must nourish him. So if you begin to nourish in him, you've gone too far. That's not what he said. He said you must feed him. If he's hungry, or if he's thirsty, and you are dear, you can give him something to eat or give him something to drink. But he did not say you must nourish him. That's the difference. Somebody hurt you. The scripture tells us about we must forgive. Okay. When somebody hurt you, in some cases they traumatizes you. They fight you so hard and so vigorously that they don't leave no room, no room for reconciliation. When the misunderstanding is clear up, they have done so much and they have said so much to you that they can't even come back to you and ask for forgiveness. And even if they come, sometimes you are so traumatized. You need counseling. They are coming back to ask you, to demand that you forgive them. After they traumatize you. You are scared to even see him walking down the road. Much more him come knocking on your door. Ask him to come in. Come in, come do what? Come put a bullet in your head. You have to know, child of God, how far to go with your forgiveness. You have to know how much food you are giving that enemy. You have to know how much water to drink you are giving that enemy. You have to know what kind of prayer you are praying for that enemy. You feed him so he to, to keep him alive to become sons of your heavenly father. You bless him with the blessing so he can become sons of your heavenly father that is the climax of what our Lord is trying to teach here that is the summary of everything what he's trying to say that is the theme of everything that he's trying to say you want this enemy to become sons of your heavenly father and everything you do to or say to that enemy is intended for him to become sons of your heavenly father that's the reason for the forgiving spirit that you're going to exercise toward him that is the reason for the brotherhood that you're going to exercise toward him for him to become sons of your heavenly father don't misunderstand this verse it will be to your own demise when you say that if somebody smite you on the right and the right cheek you must turn the left cheek also he's not talking about in a physical sense it is an hidden it is an hidden that they use in Israel But we don't use it in our hemisphere. But it means to take the wrong. Even though you're not wrong. But for peace sake. To take the wrong. To make it hand with if that can fix anything. The Lord bless you. And keep yourself safe from this virus that is going around. Stay in. As long as you can stay in. Don't go in the street if you don't have to go in the street because this thing is here born. And when you go to some of these two already there's a lot of people. You can feel it in the atmosphere around you. You can feel it around you. So either you're gonna wear a good mask. If you go outside or don't go out there, period, if you can avoid to go out there. The Lord bless you. Dr. Mark Bean signing out.